Do we such a thing as too much compost? Would a real gardener even suggest something like that? Let's find out. So I've been doing the chicken composting and bringing in fresh vegetables and uh, fruit sometimes and putting it out. Good morning, girls. And uh, cycling it through, letting the chickens, you know, rummage through it. Oh, good, I closed the gate. It's been producing just as Edible Acres said it would. It's, I get uh, really rich uh, compost. But maybe I'm getting too much compost. So if you see my other videos on the uh, chicken composting, and I'll link to it uh, up above there, we start off with the raw vegetables, and, and we pile them up. I'll be putting some uh, straw on top of them uh, to cover it, just to give it the mix of uh, carbon and uh, nitrogen uh, levels. And, and then as we, uh, every week, when I bring in a fresh load, I take that load and I bring it to this portion. The chickens will end up going through it and sorting it out. And then the third week, this pile gets moved over to here. And as you can see, it starts to really break down at this point. You still got, you know, the um, bits of uh, food around. And there's, you know, some grass clippings that I throw on here as well. And then in the fourth week, it gets moved from this pile over to that pile. And that's where we have our uh, problem now. That's a heck of a lot of compost for me. I've got a suburban plot here, northeastern New Jersey. It's one of the most densely populated uh, states in the country, if not the most. So there's not too much open land uh, around here, and they've squeezed in uh, properties as closely as they can. So we got about like 50 feet wide by about 120 feet long. So that's a lot of compost for uh, the garden that I have, even for the, the trees and the uh, shrubs, if I want to spread it around there. Now this is basically the pile from the wintertime uh, composting, and I'll link that video up here. Basically what I did was I brought in an extra load of uh, leaves, wood chips, and regularly added uh, the, uh, the vegetable matter to the pile. But it was one big pile in the middle of the, uh, the pen here, and it never got moved around. It just, I would open it up during the winter time because it would get like a thick crust of uh, frost on it but down below it never really uh froze at all so i was able to turn it over it never really seemed like it was heating up at all i never saw any steam rising out of the pile or anything like that but it was uh, a place where the chickens still could go and uh, uh scratch through it and uh, have fun in there and they did seem to enjoy it and they uh, look forward to coming in and i would always bring in regular editions of the uh, vegetable matter and put it on there every week so there was always fresh food for them to uh scratch through. I guess about sometime in early spring, late winter, early spring, I began dividing up the uh, pile into uh, its component uh, parts so that it could start breaking down and I could start moving it over into the um, pile, but in not with such a, a big mass all at once. Well, <laughs> it's still turned into a, a pretty large pile so far, and it's not actually all done. That third pile that I had showed you uh, just before, that's actually the end of that winter pile. Now I would have been tackling it every week, taking out some, sifting it and uh, putting it away. Cause that's what I'm doing. I'm actually putting it into uh, bags that I've used for uh, when I bought like compost at the uh, uh, box stores or whatever. I, uh, I save their bags and then I'm putting the compost that I'm making into those bags. And that way it's just a easily carried size <laughs> to wherever I need it in the garden. But the problem is that it's been raining nonstop. For, it feels like two months. And uh, I've said it, uh, it's like we live in the Pacific Northwest around here. It's so wet in New Jersey. We'd get like a one dry day and the next day it would rain. Like yesterday it was a gorgeous sunny day and then overnight it rained again. It looks like it's going to break up today, like it's not going to rain today, but I do hear more rain is coming, although the weekend's supposed to be nice. But uh, it's been tough then to come out here. For one thing, the 
compost is really wet and sifting the compost when it's really wet isn't easy. Also with a mound like this, I'm just using a little sifter that I made over there. It fits over a wheelbarrow that I have. It's two foot by two foot uh, square uh, sifter that rolls back and forth on a track. And this amount of compost going through that little screen would be long and arduous. So I'm gonna end up having to build myself a, a trommel, uh, and basically a, a rotary sifter that'll uh, be able to do a little bit more and not be so uh, horrible on my back. But that's if we get uh, some dry weather and this pile can actually dry out a little bit because it, it just gets wet and it's constantly wet. So it's very heavy, it clogs up the screens. So I've just been piling it up here hoping for uh, some dry weather uh, to come. Sooner or later, I, I guess it will. My only concern though is that having this large pile here, the chickens will get the idea that they can jump over the fence. So far they haven't, <laughs> we'll see, but that's why I ended up having to put an extension on my original fence that I had in here because they were trying to, not trying to, they would occasionally fly over the, uh, the fence. So I put like a two foot extension up and that has kept them in. But now that this pile is getting high, that fence just might be tempting for them. Hopefully that tree branch right there deters them from trying to uh, jump up into it. We'll find out. <laughs> I might be running around those blocks back there chasing my chickens. But what it also means, having all this compost here, means I don't really have to do any other composting. As you can see, I got a, a few composting bins here. I got these two bins for free. This one I don't like at all. I don't like the design of it. I use it a little bit, but to get the uh, compost out of it, it's not actually very convenient at all. Basically, you have to open up this door here and then turn it so that it just dumps out on the ground. So like I said, it's not a very efficient design. So I don't like that. This one is good. Uh, this is, uh, I use this as a, a leaf uh, composter in the winter time, <clears throat> or actually in the fall, I fill it up with uh, leaves and I alternate uh, actually some uh, horse bedding with manure and a, a layer or two as I go up with uh, vegetable matter and then just let it, I don't turn it or anything throughout the winter. I just let it uh, break down on its own. Uh, beginning of uh, springtime, that's when I start uh, turning it and I'll just let it uh, compost like that. Don't know if I'll wait till the, the end of the year to uh, refill it once I uh, take everything out because I could, it, it's pretty much broken down now. Yeah. So I've actually taken a bunch out of here, but it's uh, broken down quite a lot. And uh, so I can start sifting this. Problem with this unit's design is that when you start filling it up with uh, matter, it bulges out the sides a little bit. So the lid doesn't quite fit as tight <laughs> or line up perfectly. And I just put this then and pricks on top just to keep the wind from uh, blowing it over. And then this was a homemade composter. You know, it just spins. You know, if I can grab the handles. So I haven't spun it. It's got some stuff in it now, but I don't think it's broken up all that well. I might not have the proper ratios of... Uh, carbon to nitrogen in there. It's starting to. It's starting to break down. So, but yeah, this was a homemade composter I made. With the amount of compost that I'm producing from the chickens, and even then, once I get rid of this uh, winter pile, the weekly uh, compost then that'll uh, be created, I really don't need all this extra compost being produced. So, I'm probably going to give away uh, this composter and that one as well. I'm going to keep this one just because I think having a uh, leaf mold is uh, composted leaf mold is uh, an excellent resource for the garden 
and for the uh, trees and shrubs. So I'll keep that one. Still, that's going to be a lot of compost then I'll be producing throughout the year. And I said, not only am I going to be having the winter compost pile here, which will give me an awful lot. I mean, a lot of that still needs to be broken down more. So when I sift it, a lot of that's going to go back into the uh, cycle again, and it'll come through until it finally all breaks down. But there's still going to be a heck of a lot of compost there that I'll be putting up. And... Then I'll be producing more throughout the uh, the year, and for four chickens, it's produce they're producing a lot of compost for me. So can you have too much compost? Nah. <laughs> You'll always find uh, uses for it. I'll be putting the compost out underneath the fruit trees, uh, around the different plants that I've got growing, around the base of the uh, the grapevines, and like I said, there's plenty of. Uh, uses for it. Plus I have the garden because I'll be putting a nice thick layer of uh, compost then uh, in the fall once I start to put the garden to bed uh, I'll be putting a thick layer of compost down over the top and just let it break down over the winter time and then come springtime I'll have a nice uh, uh, bed to uh, plant in but I'm still probably gonna have a lot left over. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna be using it all up. Alright if you like this video give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you'd already do so and hit that alarm bell and that way you'll be notified right away when videos like this are posted. Okay, thanks for watching.